Should be able to fade this guy out and get this thing going. Let's do this real quick. We'll play it. We'll play it. We'll get the volume down quiet on here. And we're going to play this game real quick. One more, one more, one more while everyone gets in here to the show. Here we go. Let's do it. So what's everyone got going on Wednesday? Sorry I don't have more of an up top preparation thing right now. Just want to do this. We got some good guests. We didn't even do an intro to the show, did I? I just came right into it. I'm turning this down. We'll do it now. This is an early show. I'm your host, Kyle Ayers. We're going to play a little bit of this. A little quiplash. Then we're going to get our guests in here and hang out and talk to them for a while. We just amped up and went right in, didn't we? How's everyone's Wednesday? What, who's working? Who's skipping work? Who's got what going on? Yeah. Um, all right, so let's think about... I got all these things I want to be working on, and I've been thinking about the show. Um, I don't think we'll have Quiplash on Friday. I'm trying to figure out how to balance doing this and other things that I want to be writing and working on and, and making. Because right now this kind of dominates a pretty hefty portion of my week. And then... It's a couple days, and then we're getting right back into planning this. All right, you got 15 seconds. Let's get that one going. Here we go. There we go. Let's vote. Um, so we got to figure out, like... What I want the schedule of the show to continue being. We got the show on Saturday. If you guys look below, Post Rattle is Saturday. Uh, you can see all the information down there. It's a comedic co compliment contest. Head to head, nice roasting. That's all just below. So check that out. Um, no, never seen it today. Just couldn't get quite get. We got guests coming on, and we'll play some never seen it stuff. But no one booked to do a script, and and the the. The problem that I'm having is the strict time is making is is making it difficult to book people. That's what I've ran into the most is is trying to figure out how to get people booked within this strict time. So I think I'm just gonna have to start doing the podcast when I can during the stream, but just also on top of that. So just kind of getting back into it. I guess I could do that, like a pre-recorded thing. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we could do something like a pre-record after it comes out, I suppose, and, and stream it then. That's not a bad idea. We could just put them on YouTube still. Like, what do, do people come watch videos on here? I'm just sort of figuring out what is my best, like, stuff to be doing on here. I want to do my live comedy shows. Um. Oh. 
Like, I want to keep doing... I get the post rattle. I'm going to do Saturdays now, kind of consistently. Because it seems like we get more people for stuff like that. But I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. The post rattle's on this channel. I'm, uh... It's just the talk show, this is a lot of planning and work, and it's hard to get people booked at the consistent times. Um, and it's also sort of, because of the way it happens right in the middle of the day, preventing me from uh, being as productive on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, as I would like to be with other stuff. So we'll see, but I'll definitely keep doing this at least a couple days, and then just kind of transitioning to doing more of these shows. But Boast Rattle, if that goes well, that would make me so happy. That is what I'm really trying to put the effort into. If you guys uh, come watch that on Friday or Saturday. See, put all the effort in. We got more people booked. Julian McCullough is booked. Uh, Amy Miller is booked. So we have Amy Miller versus Josh Gondelman. Julian McCullough versus Dave Ross. Julia Rossi versus her husband, Will Miles. And uh, we have Sarah Schaefer on the show. We're figuring it all out. Okay, Char. But there's also sort of like other produced podcast stuff that I want to be doing and, 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 and that sort of thing. So it's just about finding... What the best balance is with that, I suppose. Tin Dick Rusted is so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh boy, that's the last thing I would ever want is to watch him try and figure out the internet. I don't know. What are you guys watching? What do people watch? What, like, what is? Do people like stuff in the evenings? Um, I'm just trying to figure out the. I, I like doing this because there's not as much going on now. But I guess the downtime is, or the downside is, you don't really get as many people. But I love the people that are here, and we got a good, consistent thing. That's very fun. I don't know. Just talking about it. On to round two, where all points are doubled. Doubled, I say.
Yeah. Right, there's something to the mornings. Um, it's just kind of what attacks on for like my time is 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. for one episode of this. And so this seems like a targeted question right here to me. I think maybe at least Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, keep this. Maybe not necessarily the two hours every day, but kind of it, still what it's got going on. And then just do the one other Saturday. It's bow straddle or something like that. Yeah, Weeby was fun. I like doing that. <laughs> okay, next one. A support group for men who can't grow beards. Vote away. What is it? oh movie watching? Yeah, that could be really fun. I do think I'll have to figure out. Yeah, got to figure it out. But I don't like having 800 different things going on on the channel. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not sure. I'm not good at, at it. And, and, and. Missing a vote in there. Who missed their vote? Who missed their vote? Yeah, I always like those sort of riffing things. I used to do one sometimes with uh, uh, a couple times I dropped in. Don Will, who was on here, and Wyatt Snack had one called Shouting at the Screen that I did. That was so fun. I feel a route coming on here just because of the simplicity of this answer. That's just not what I'm telling you. I feel it. I feel it. Oh, no, it wasn't. I was feeling a dad route. I thought dad was going to run away with that. Yes, Brick. You're talking about Brick? I think Brick is actually the name of the bagpipes funeral song too. Where are all these votes? I thought we got eight people in here. Who's not voting? Next on deck. Don't throw out those used chopsticks. They could be used to play. Time to vote. See this thing. That's working okay today. We got it already, I think. Nope, I didn't even do the. It. Boom. We got Gabrus coming up right now. After we finish up this game. I think this would live better. <laughs> Ready, set, vote. 
Okay, feels like a polarizing... Oh, Fearless, you missed it, didn't you? We already got the answer to this one. It's not Frozen Bruges, but you are on the right track. Wow. Wow, everybody. Do you feel bad about yourselves? I can't believe we have so many slavery apologists in here by name. Everyone but Shar and me. Everyone but Shar and me. There it is. Batman and Robin Bruges is the one for the day. All right, last one. And now round three, the last lap. This time you'll all be answering the same prompt. I don't know. I don't know anything about the profanity filter or whatever that is. Oh, and if you're here and it's your first time here, please follow the show. You can subscribe to the show as well. It's got a little star icon up there. If you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. That's great, right? Yeah, we got a bunch of new followers within the last hour. Let's replay their little things. Boom. There's one. Uh, boom. Here's one. They're all in there. Thank you guys for following. You can subscribe if you got Amazon Prime. It is free. It's like the only thing I really want you doing with Amazon these days. It's like a one way you can actually use Amazon without uh, exploiting people. Okay, soak it, in. And it probably still does somehow, honestly, for being honest. To award your top three gifts. Get out your gold, silver, and bronze medals now. I don't feel good. Don't feel too good about it. But here we go. Award those medals. Nice. Let's see who stacked the medals. Bronze first. Silver. And gold. All right. Let's turn that into cold hard points. Okay. 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 Whoo! I do all right at the final one. I did all right in the final one. I feel okay about that. That's the game. Let's see the final scores. Oh, Froomja. It's all right. It's you. Letter time. Where are we living? Where are we living? What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Letter it up. Letter it up. L. L. Look at all these L's. Taking the L. Wow. Wow. Great win. Not a great guess. Not a great guess. All right. We're going to be right back because we're going to get your first guess in here. I'll be back in one second. Get this music up a little louder while we're gone. Maybe get them. There we go. I know a man. He could give me therapy. What's the use of therapy? You don't want to change, babe. Alright, everybody.
everybody. Please give it up for our first guest today. Uh, you may know him from his podcast, High and Mighty. You may know him from any of his various appearances on everything that's ever been made in any capacity in the whole world. But <laughs> please give it up for John Gabris, everybody. What's up, hey, man? How are you? I th- am I still muted? You're no longer muted. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me, Kyle. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, so what, uh, I think we sound okay. I think it's all good. I told him, I am, anytime this sounds okay when I get in here, I'm, like, blown away. I'm actually surprised. You're echoing in my ear, but I think it's because I'm hearing both Zencaster and Oh, Zen. yeah, yeah, we got the two things. I wonder how to change it so Zencaster doesn't give you a monitor. I'm just new to it. Wait, I got an idea. Um, what if I mute myself here? Now is that better? Now, am I no longer echoing for you? It should be good, right? Yeah, that sounds great. Boom. There's an echo. Everyone's saying there's another echo. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure... You know what? We're just going to stop Zencaster for now. That's what we'll do. <laughs> I was ambitious, um, but I don't think I can do two I things. I can't hear anything time. now. All right, here we go. We're back. Now we're back. <laughs> now we're back. I think I was getting too ambitious trying to record the audio as well, if that makes sense. Yeah. And... um. Who knows? Maybe that may, I got to figure it out. But how are you doing? You, you know, you can record, record audio right in Zoom. It's just not as good is what you're saying. Yeah, I was trying to get like the straight from the computer audio. But we all know what we're living with. These, you know what I mean? No one holds it against you right now if you're having <laughs> Zoom quality audio. I mean, if they're tuning in to your uh, daily Zoom show or whatever, <laughs> they they get it. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Like, I would, uh, <laughs> although every, every, it does seem like every day people are like, you know, there's a tech issue. I'm like, there's so many tech issues. I'm not even allowed to go outside. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about the tech issue. What about the biological attack issue? So like, how are you? About... I like your backdrop here. Yeah, I, I put a T-shirt over my dresser. Do you want to give, uh, <laughs> want to give a letter guess here in our uh, continually running hangman game that we have going on? Oh yeah, uh, how about T? T. All right, there are no T's. Great, great, <laughs> big help. <laughs> Love to see X as an early guess. Oh, well, Shane Torres was on, and he wanted to sabotage the chat, so he kept guessing horrible letters. Yeah, that sounds like Shane. It really, sometimes he does peak <laughs> Shane situations. Uh, so what's what, what's been going on before we get into our rapid fire, learn about John Gabriel's questionnaire, how you been holding up? Um, I'm good. Things are uh, fine. Like, I'm in a very privileged situation i have an apartment I, my wife is still working i can still do some stuff yeah um you know we can cook we have the money to order food uh so i don't feel i feel like a bitch complaining about anything but uh <laughs> <laughs> I it's mean, all i, I probably all would champagne problems i could you know be like I mean? i'll be drowning and I'll be apologizing to the lifeguard I inconvenienced. Uh, I'll be drowning and I'll be like, and I understand that many people have drowned before me and I'm not special for drowning. <laughs> people have actually probably drowned slower and more painful than I have. Yes. As a matter of fact, this is my fault. I chose to go in the ocean. I'm sure there's plenty of people <laughs> who don't choose this. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm well aware that things are way worse for a lot of people. So I, the fact that I can't go to my favorite restaurant or the beach or the arc light means I'll just keep my mouth shut. And, oh, yeah. And uh, you can just go to the beach if you want to be one of those people who just doesn't care about anyone else. Uh, I am one of those people, but I, <laughs> did you go? Did you go? No, I can't bring myself to go. I, I will cop to that. Like I'm 38. Now, if I was 23 and this was happening, everyone would see me on the news in Florida on the beach <laughs> and be like, I fucking hate this dude. I was watching the kids in Florida who everyone was like, because I was mad at them too, because it's an okay thing to be angry at them about. But I was like, what was I doing when I was 19? Ah, I remember. I wore a Ronald Reagan mask and got in fake fights around downtown Columbia, Missouri. <laughs> oh, uh, what did I do on 9 11? Walk past the uh, TV screen on my college campus that showed the burning buildings and go to take a nap to wake up three hours later for my roommates going, hey, did you hear about the World Trade Center? And me go, oh yeah, dude, it was like smoking this morning. And they were like, all of us 
are from New York, man. Like, like <laughs> you didn't mention this, Teddy. I was like, oh, I didn't know it was a big deal. I thought it was like a building fire. I wasn't paying any attention. Yeah. I literally like missed 9-11. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I lived with all all of us were New Yorkers. All of our families worked in New York City. Yeah. And I just was like, oh, weird, and went to bed. <laughs> so the, I, I, I'll, I'll be the person who fucks it up for us in any right. capacity. I don't, I, I can't. I, 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 I knee jerk do get really angry at people, even when I see them doing like fun day trips to a field where they take pictures because then i'm like well everyone else is going to see that and want to go take pictures and oh, everyone yeah. else is going to go but then sometimes i'm like i gotta eat a chicken sandwich well and, or sometimes your wife needs to go to the poppy field and you're <laughs> like okay but you can't post a picture of me there <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's just such a, such a you know and, and it's not like you we are out um asking people to cut our hair Right, right, right. <laughs> so it's such a weird balance of feeling yeah. guilty on both sides, no matter what, uh, in any capacity. Oh yeah, no, it's great. I'm fucked if I do, fucked if I don't. I love, <laughs> I love this catch, catch twenty two of depression where it's inevitable. Do you feel like you can get anything done during this? Like new, st- I, I've been anything new that I've tried to do, I, I've struggled with, but I've been able to like really convince myself i'm like coasting by on like letting other stuff take all the time up does that make sense i am i am my friend ben rogers described it as doing anything in this quarantine feels like you're going for uh like a max rep deadlift where you're like (laughs) like just to get anything done i'm like okay all right here we go here we go and then i like build myself up to send that email or <laughs> do that zoom show <laughs> i always remember this one joke ted alexandro this new york comedian had he was oh, like, i know ted yeah he's so funny one of the best and he goes he's just opened this whole set at the knitting factory one time he goes you know that thing you got to do just do it he's like today i did it it's done i've been celebrating ever since <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, I've let an email sit and be that, and then also been mad at people for letting emails sit and be that. Oh yeah, I'm a complicated creature. When I do it, it's when I do it, I'm completely understanding of my own motivation yes. when anyone else does it. Uh, <laughs> if someone doesn't get back to me for two days, I'm like, so this person hates only me. But sometimes <laughs> I won't. Someone will be like, Kyle, would you be interested in being on a TV show? And I'll email them five days later, like, sorry, just got around to this, and they're like, I know, the show's it's- out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm having a hard time cr- like doing anything that feels creative, but yeah. I'm getting good at like, uh, oh, I would love it if I had a daily habit of doing Duolingo, like working on my Spanish. Like right. I was able to, I'm, I'm able to get these small sort of things I would do. It, I can get myself into a space where it feels like my wife and I rented a house for a week with nothing to do. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I can get myself into like, I've always wanted to read more. I have been reading more, but God help me if I've gotten anything remotely creative done i have no drive to like i'm still doing all my podcasts but i have no drive to be like i should make a video while i'm laying around or like wouldn't it be cool to do this for charity i mean i made this entire show to just sort of start doing something to not go crazy and then i'm realizing that this was all created i do love doing it and i like the show but i'm like is this a giant new distraction like i don't have all the things i was working on before this started oh yeah i mean it's a surprise First of all, not a surprise at all that so many like comics are doing stuff like this, but the main, the fact that you are is the least surprising thing ever. Cause you're <laughs> like, you're like, okay, here's the parameters for what we're doing. Great. I'm going to push the, like, I usually have nine concurrently running live shows with completely different themes that are wildly <laughs> producible that I have to oversee like prop list, cast list. Yeah. Uh, scripts, oh, we do feedback, have a book title on Saturday though. I don't know how that's going to go digitally I'm, I'm ex- i gotta start getting back into my shows where the burden is on the performer instead of me <laughs> uh, I, gotta, I gotta gotta start having people write my shows for me again instead of me doing this one well i feel burdened anyway so don't worry about it <laughs> um yeah so it's but it's been such a uh yeah you're i just feel guilt it's good i'm happy when i don't know everything makes i either feel bad for spending time on something or feel bad for not spending time on something but i don't know what i could be making to be like here you are doing the thing that you should do with the time right and i'm I'm okay like with comparing myself to my peers where i'm like i 
I they've been doing better than me for 10 years so it's fine like I'm not going to stress about it now like I'm not all of a sudden beginning going to become productive in this quarantine yeah but there's a lot of difficulty around like so much of my business has dried up and but also my wife continues to work full time but now we're both around each other so I have to have some semblance of like I like part of the reason why I got to agree to doing people's Zoom shows is so that it seems like I'm doing stuff. Sure, like, sure. I have to come across like yeah I'm a, oh yeah I got this I, I got like, just a picture Andrew of Kyle's thing as if I'm getting a fucking uh, this is SAG after or like this is your <laughs> full time job that she still has. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing this and my own podcast at six thirty today, and I'm like I don't know how I'm gonna have time to do anything. I, I you know <laughs> I picture you like she's working in some room and then the camera moves out a little bit and there's just you have been standing there the entire day that she's been working on anything she's like, like don't oh. you have anything today it's like i had that zoom thing last week <laughs> i'm gonna go stand in the driveway with my shirt off for a little while be like oh, okay well i'll be here earning us our money and health insurance go do whatever the hell you want <laughs> <laughs> i have found this weird thing has been happening i've done like some zoom stand-up shows and and they're kind of they're not fun <laughs> but I, I'm so meandery on stage that I go whenever there's like a crowd response, I let that dictate how the rest of the set is going to go. And I sometimes can't get two jokes out in 10 minutes. <laughs> but been, so uh, eliminating uh, a crowd reaction yeah. puts so, you in a weird space. So now I can like get through all my jokes and people are like, those are a lot of really good jokes. And I'm like, how did I do? This is a 20 minute set I did in four <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Well, I I did ask Cat on Saturday, and I felt the same way. Like uh, improv, especially, it's like I have no idea. Like this is untested. I don't know if it's good. But then the Zoom aspect of doing improv just makes you feel like you're on like a fucking dumb conference call doing bits with your friends. I've never really been able to. I really love improv, and I've always struggled with uh, improv while sitting still. <laughs> yeah no it's not ideal but it's like all of a sudden you do it and you're like that was fun it was nice catching up with you anthony atamanic john yeah. gamberling jessica st Clair, and then someone's like we had over a thousand people on youtube i'm like oh my god right people were watching that <laughs> oh fuck, i did that i was doing such dumb stupid like because when you're looking at your computer screen like all yeah. of a sudden it feels like everything gets knocked down you lose like the i'm on stage right you're just exactly. like oh this is where i fucking watch movies, eat dinner, jerk off. So I guess I could just fucking yeah. fuck around on camera. And then you're like, oh, Kyle put that out. Oh, I see. Right. It's so people are watching. It ended up somewhere <laughs> with some people at a place. It has been uh, uh, interesting. <laughs> I mean, oh. this literally was the thing that I created to have a reason to get up. And it used to be at 10 a.m. And then I was like, well. That was too difficult. <laughs> Well, it was difficult to book. <laughs> oh, right, right, People are like, right. Can I come on in the last 10% of the show? And I'm like, you want to? Yeah, I'll put you on from 11.40 to 11.42. And they're like, can I come on at 11.41? <laughs> um, all right, but I got to have, we have a game here we call 10 rapid fire questions to learn more about you. Oh, wait, there's actually 10 more rapid fire questions up to four more times. It's 50 rapid fire questions real quick. Um, here's how it works. I don't want to spoil the game for you. Uh, basically you're going to give me a number one to 50 and we're, I'm going to ask you some questions starting with that number from my list of rapid fire questions. Just wh however you feel about them. All right. Okay. They're more than, you're more than allowed to, uh, use it to, you don't have to keep rapid is they're not rapid. All right. Give me a number one to 50. Uh, 14, 14. What film bad guy do you align with the most? You started with, like, the best question in the whole list. <laughs> uh, what film bad guy do I align with? The oh, this is a great question. Uh, uh, While you th uh, Henry so Hill who? from Goodfellas. Is he technically, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, is I, he technically a bad guy? I don't I know. I think he's a Well, that might be why you align with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's fine. Pasta looks great. <laughs> I, for, my immediate head was like, why did you call Hank Hill Henry? <laughs> I go by his full name. <laughs> and I also think that propane is the devil. So I think, Henry, <laughs> I think Hank's the bad guy. <laughs> uh, I always, man, who was I just about to say? I had a real thing in my head. Oh well, who cares? It could have been, could have been whatever. All right, here we go. Next question. Question fifteen. What's a road that pops into your head when you think about streets or roads? Uh, Montgomery Street. 
Ooh. All right. Uh, what's a, a joke that's not yours that you love? Wait, we, we should, you should call this rapid fire answers. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Because the yeah. questions are at your pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and the answers at, well, I, guess the, I, I feel you. the pressure to answer fast. And then you're like, all right. No, no, it's Rapids Fire. I wrote these in Cedar Rapids. Sorry, I think I messed up the entire thing. It's Rapids Fire, and then they I got let go. So it's technically Rapids for comma for fired. Yeah. <laughs> it's Rapids comma fired questions, and it's so sort of like it's more of an exit interview, I suppose, than anything else. This is what I ask a woman after she sleeps over my house. The <laughs> right. The next question is, do you drink enough water? So. It actually is. I wish it wasn't, but it actually is. Wait, what's our current question? Current question. What's a joke that you love? Oh, fuck. Ooh, whose joke? I mean, uh, Mulaney's Law and Order bit is pretty much like one of those things where what I think is the the best kind of joke where you, the premise is something you've maybe thought of. Yeah. Oh, and you kind of, yeah. you pride yourself and you're like, that is kind of fun. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, a lot of people kind of picked up on that premise. Yeah. But then one person takes it and just takes and just runs with it. And you're like, fuck. There's yes, something about that the... is like, even like yeah. the fact that you could discover the premise makes you go like, yeah, how hard can it be? And then when you see someone demonstrate, like just taking the premise and attacking it from like a thousand angles. And yeah. You're like, yeah, kid's good. I think about I think about Salt and Pepper Diner once every two days. It's amazing. It's amazing. I think about it. It's just so. F I love a joke where also a comedian says they're not even the funniest person in the story that they're telling. I really right. appreciate that. Where he's like, my friend, he's funny. What made him That's, a genius? I feel like a lot of comedy guys and comedy people, I should say, have a friend from their childhood that they're like, I wasn't even the funny one of my friends. My funny friend is a elementary school teacher in my hometown. If people like, who watch <laughs> this stream might know, but my friend Brian Sturgill, who comes on here sometimes, uh, he's the funniest person I've ever met. He's the funniest person I've ever met in my whole life. So funny that he comes on. The first time he ever came on the stream, I was like, do you want to just come on? And he's like, sure. And I came on and he just had the song from the bunker and Lost playing. And he was just typing on his computer, not responding to anything for three minutes. Play my own kind of music. Right. It was just so funny. And then he just, he's so funny. He's the funniest person I've ever met. And and I just want to be like, you, everyone knows my friend Brian. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. I mean, my brothers are some of the funniest people. Like, they make me laugh more than uh, some of my friends who are, like, according to America, very funny. Yeah, according to America. <laughs> uh, all right, next question. What is a word that you love? Oh, uh, whew, I love a lot of words, but I, I got to say I, uh, I love the word barbaric. Okay. Because I think a lot of people use it negatively, but for me, I, I, I find that adjective, I, I only really use it like as a positive right like in a i'm like i'm like oh thing. that dude's fucking barbaric right. man or like oh did you see the way he ate that wing <laughs> that was barbaric i like All a word that can describe describe like large strong and imposing but without being about actual physical strength yeah <laughs> like sort of the guy that you should be not like but it's like there's just something really gratifying about a little dude beating up a big dude in any manner not even like a physical fight or you know what i mean the, the less jacked person and yeah yeah barbaric's a good word is what i'm saying <laughs> in more in more words than what you said but also less convincingly that's what i'm trying to say don't worry i'm gonna go longer and less focused yeah, that's yeah. my <laughs> uh, it, it's called uh yes and while i have you it's an improv technique <laughs> uh okay next question how many songs should an album have on it ideally oh uh uh no less than 10 no more than 14. right do you believe in uh hidden tracks uh yeah but it can't be the 15th okay great <laughs> uh do you drink enough water uh i yes that's like the healthiest habit i have is how much water i drink i have the only thing that has really helped me is i then i lug around giant dumb things now and that's what helps me drink more water i can't just do the cup I got to carry oh. this big, dumb thing around. Same here. I carry a big, dumb thing when I leave the house. But being at home, all you need is one big, dumb cup. Put some ice cubes, some chopped cucumber, and water in it, and you can drink that shit all fucking day. There you go. What a recipe. This, let me shout out Let me shout out a fucking product here. Uh, I'm a name for it. When I find a company I like, I use it like crazy. Yeah. Yeti makes these cups that can keep 
fucking drink. Yeah, exactly. Keep drinks freezing or boiling, whatever you need it to do. And it's fuck. I drink ice cold water. It's really, really wild. I mean, here we go. Let's get this ice has been in here since like seven o'clock this morning. <laughs> I know. I will have like iced coffee cubes that I'll rinse and then use in my water afterwards because yeah. the cup keeps everything so cold. It really. It, sometimes the ice gets so cold. It's so crazy. Be like, you know what's cold? This ice. ice. <laughs> um, like, I, like my wife will roll over and be like, oh, do you have water like on the nightstand? I'll be like, oh, yeah, here. Is this the I, same I, Yeti that makes my microphone? It can't be. No, 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 no. That's blue Yeti, I think. That's right. The Yeti is the second word. Yeah. And then uh, my wife will take a sip of the ice water and she'll be like, in the middle of the night, she'll be like, oh, my God, my fucking <laughs> teeth. My teeth hurt so. And I'm like, oh, right. Yeah. She's like, how do you even drink this? This, like, woke me up. It's mm-hmm. so cold. I'm like, oh, right. I just love <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I, I do. I, you know what? I do too. Hey, we're weirdos. You ever like really that. go to bat for something everyone likes, and then realize you're really going to bat for something everyone likes? I, I found myself trying to pitch what was amazing about going to the beach once to like a group of people, and I was like, <laughs> and as I was doing it, I think they started to go like, yeah, no shit. Like I was like, the ocean dude, is like, soaking fuck. wet. I'm like, it's so chill. You can do blah, you know, and I'm like, like all the shit I'm describing, and I'm like, oh wait, what the fuck? It's like man? not even specifics about it. It's just giant metaphorical T-shirt slogans. Like honestly, what's what's dope about the beach is it's chill. Have you guys been there? <laughs> people are like what the what? fuck i will uh, every time i get high a lot of the ideas i write down are things that are i think i thought of that exist does that make sense yeah you're like a restaurant that also serves alcohol first <laughs> thing like, yeah, like, <laughs> i thought i invented zoos when i was watching jurassic park high one time and thought they needed like a jurassic park for elephants <laughs> and just sort of started writing it all out until my roommate told me that that was zoos and then i was like <laughs> mad at how good of a word zoo was compared to like whatever i had written down to call them so we bought a jurassic park for animals yeah <laughs> so we bought a dra- <laughs> what we did is we found a mosquito in some amber and then we melted the amber and this is our mosquito exhibit <laughs> yeah we couldn't figure out the next step but we do have a bunch of mosquitoes now which is dope i mean living in the in one of my uh uh, now we're getting. I wrote a sketch for the, an SNL packet two years in a row about Jurassic Park getting sued for trying to reopen, and then they, <laughs> then they did it on the show. And I don't. Uh, I say parallel. You know, it's definitely parallel. Whatever, whatever I need to say to sound not bitter about it is exactly what it is. Right. Well, to be fair, we. You can ent- intellectualize both a how it was completely. Uh, uh, a coincidence and b how it was absolutely stolen i assume it actually That's the problem. Yeah, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly because of like Jurassic they're like Park equally explainable out, yeah maybe like for, it, but then if you if you are a bunch of comedians thinking about a new jurassic park your brain is gonna be how do they get to open the park again do you know what i mean like that's clear because right. it keeps being it's jurassic park's fault for being the same movie 12 times <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, okay. Speaking of rapid fire, <laughs> uh, here we go. Here we go. How did you make them? How did you spend the money from your very first job growing up? Oh, uh, whew, my very first, my first real job was a town of Hempstead pool lifeguard. And, uh, I spent all that money. I pretty much all my money was spent on the same shit from like 16 to like 35, which was just like, <laughs> media and alcohol well, yeah. media media and alcohol and, and like partying eating out hmm. lifestyle yeah pretty much entertainment is like <laughs> okay so being happy you could say being <laughs> yeah. happy uh yeah like I, I'm, I'm trying to think of specifically something yeah my first big purchase i made for myself was before i went away to college so this would be 2000 the year i graduated high school i bought a dvd player i was like the first person to have a DVD player. What did it come with movies? Cause the first one I bought came with two movies. No, what movies I had to buy my movies separately. It came, the one I bought was, it was crazy looking. It was just a circle and it looked a little futuristic, I guess. Cool. Um, and it came with blue streak and the skulls. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm a bit of a pacey head. So I'm pumped about the skulls. I really, really liked the, the skulls uh, a lot. And then I was, 
imagine I'm the person who was disappointed by the skulls too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want to you want to hear how much of a fucking uh, seventeen or eighteen year old white kid I was when I bought my DVD player? Listen to the first four movies I buy. Um, the, these are the DVDs I have when I go away to college for the first time. I have. Wait, maybe not. Maybe Fight Club wasn't yet, depending on when Fight Club came out. But I feel like it would have been one of my. Yeah. I had Fight Club, Jaws. Braveheart and Enter the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I got sharks, I got karate, I got swords, and I got you know fish what I love? You're like, what's your music taste? You're like, I, I guess if I had to narrow it down to a genre, it would be dorm poster. <laughs> yeah, it's like, me? Oh, I like uh, Notorious B.I.G., yeah. O.A.R. <laughs> it's got to be letters. <laughs> R.E.M., N.I.N. <laughs> <laughs> R-E-M, O-A-R, B-I-G. <laughs> oh, that's so L-M-F-A-O. Funny. Those are all, those, yeah. Oh, boy. I, uh, now I'm trying to think of which time I saw O-A-R I liked it the most. <laughs> I was thinking about what I would do if I was a teenager and this was all happening. And I'm just oh, like, boy, my... would I be trying to get a girl to sit still to listen to me play Drive by Incubus on my guitar over Skype? Oh my God. I have no, like I was imagining, cause my wife and I had that conversation where we went through all of our previous living situations. Like imagine being quarantined in that old apartment. Imagine being quarantined with that roommate. Imagine being quarantined college senior year. Like we just kept sliding down to all the different yeah. living situations we had. And I feel for the people who have like the rando friend of a friend roommate, like, you know, where it's like, I moved in with my friend. They moved out. Someone from their work moved in. Right. And, and this now just happened I'm quarantined with second. them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all I can think about is rando quarantine. And they really only moved in. It's a friend of a friend who just moved in because he needed somewhere to store his birds. And yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's actually here. quarantining with his girlfriend. I'm watching his birds all week. Right. The birds have <laughs> taken over the nook. It- <laughs> um okay let me think here we go here we go next rapid fire question are there any companies whose online presence you truly hate Ooh, most at this time right now oh yeah uh, now really, it is a nightmare <laughs> i i have like been i watched like a bunch of fx shows on hulu recently so i watched a lot of commercials for the first time in a long time yeah and the amount of commercials that are about fucking covid is humiliating i it's, got it, an email from t public today where i host <laughs> i have shirts for never seen it which if you use a better merch thing can you send that to me at an like email or something like that um, i use t public as well you so do did figured, you get the email that said better days are ahead <laughs> Oh, I have like, I have them like, I delete so much because it is humiliating. And also like the craziest commercial I'm watching now that drives me up a fucking wall is for a company called Carvana, yes, which is a car vending machine. <laughs> yeah. And well, their, their pitch is now it's like contactless drop off of a car. Like who's, who wants to buy a car without ever touching right, it? Or that seeing seems it in person? <laughs> Someone just drops and wh- who's got the kind of money that's watching Hulu with commercials. You know, you can upgrade <laughs> it to without commercials and you're watching a Hulu. You're watching, you're watching episode five of Dave and you're like, you know what? I do want to order a fucking oh, man. Honda Civic for drop That's so funny thing about the you can, I don't do you have I have 9.99 a month. I don't have 12.99 a month. I do have $238 <laughs> a month. <laughs> it's just so weird. It's a it, we got a, I got an on again off again thing with money. <laughs> That's pretty true. I would My love relationship it. with money is on again, off again. Yeah. Sometimes I'm making it, and frequently I'm not. Sometimes I'm making it, and then the times I'm not, I look at the thing I have and wish I hadn't bought it. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. I always, I've been saying to people lately, uh, some of us comics and uh, artist types are a little... We have been prepared to go three to four months without work numerous like yeah I, i've had three months off mandatory uh, decided by the industry multiple <laughs> times in my life <laughs> like, i've not had a so- dr fossey but i have had an agent danielle <laughs> yeah so i i have a feel like I, I was like people are like fuck i'm not gonna be able to work for a couple of months i'm like i get it that sucks money wise but my money is always in a place where i can expect that i'm not working yeah, because I'm frequently t- having to take two months off of making I, any money. <laughs> I wish I could stress to people, and some people can probably align with me. I'm painting with a br- wide brush here. How nightmarish my taxes are. 
I can only, I mean, mine are the same. Like, I get yeah. it. Like, <laughs> and then it's, and, I'm just and like, you're like, it's here, terrible. Just scanning the documents make you want to go, like, why did I accept this $50 gig? Here like, is, <laughs> here is, this is literally the, this is the 2020 so far folder. And remember, the world ended in March. <laughs> And that's how that's like my what I use to prepare for unemployment and stuff is all in that <laughs> folder. Um, uh, I will go to the first industry. restaurant if if Applebee's or any restaurant put out a commercial that was like, "Fucking come get some chicken fingers, you fucks." I would go there if it wasn't like piano. In these times, we need macaroni and cheese made in a cast iron skillet more than ever. I would go <laughs> right away, and I would just go. I would. That's who I would. I would like. Don't patronize me, and I will patronize you. Yes, let's yeah, stop pa- patronizing me so I begin patronizing yeah. you. And speaking of which, patreon.com slash no <laughs> but it is slash never seen it. Please go if you like the podcast. Uh okay, we're gonna keep firing these questions away here. What YouTube right. video always makes you laugh? Ooh, that oh fuck, what YouTube video always I I it's a full on sketch and it's by friends, but uh the birthday boy sketch pool jumpers they're like, so funny any, anytime anyone is like oh check out this funny video and we get into like the we're, we're watching our third funny video yeah that's when i go have you guys seen pool jumpers from the birthday boys i do the that, yes it's just the perfect like fucking uh it's a very funny sketch in addition to being like a parody of something i know well which is like the creation of extreme sports documentaries yeah <laughs> so i love it, my third i always if we're talking that's I always show people the wedding speech murder fist sketch where oh, yeah. uh, Henry is that dad who just comes back into everyone's life. I've even literally just shown it on this show before so I can watch it with people. It's so funny to me. And I'm, that's where it's like, if you, yes, I like this. Yes, I like this. And I'm like, who's ready for an eight minute thing? <laughs> it's always a bold move to be like when all the friends are watching funny things to be the first person to pitch something you have to pay attention to is always it's a oh, bold yeah. move. I have a friend, like one of my stoner buddies will be like, oh, throw on this video. Oh, throw on this video. And he's like, oh, have you seen this? And like, he's like, type in and he gives me all the words and I'm like, not fully paying attention to where we're headed. And the next thing I know, he, I'm like, 36 minutes of night vision camera footage of <laughs> UFOs. And he's like, just watch it. Trust me. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> the problem is now I don't. Now I don't <laughs> trust you. Uh, okay, here we go. Next, okay, I love next question. How do you spend the money? We did that. What's a small act of rebellion that you do or have done? Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh! I don't know. That's a that's a great. Co- I've run on pool decks before. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was a swimmer. I've been. I worked at pools. You say you were a lifeguard. Yeah. Y- you know, you feel above it. <laughs> I dive. I dive into the shallow end. Uh, I do that as well. As a, you know, I was uh, on a swim team for five years. Yeah. I can dive into a shallow pool without yeah. breaking my neck. Yeah. Uh, I try not to. I mean, it would always be when I would be, because, yeah, I was I, I was on a swim team and stuff, and, and you, you can kind of, I play water polo, and you're like, I know how to navigate the shallow and without hitting my head. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> this is the weird one. <laughs> I need to feel, ab- okay, next one. Uh, can a house cat be too big? Ooh, yes, but it also depends on the size of the house because I think your ha- cat can grow to an inordinate size, but it depends on the size of your house. Like a goldfish. Right, 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 right. Oh, hey, fearless <laughs> flyer, thanks for gifting that sub out to Jones. I love, I love. The, I'm, I'm getting better at the Twitch stuff. I got, I can see it. I know when it's happening. Uh, what's a talent you wish you had? Um, I wish I could do uh, a backflip. Oh, like a standing. Do you see someone did a standing double backflip? Uh, no, but I will Google it right after this. If you, I think it's you know the House of Highlights Instagram. Yeah. You follow that one. They posted on there, and they were like standing double backflip, and it's in such a slow motion that I had enough time to be like, this dude's not gonna land this shit. Like while he was doing it, and then you know what? He landed it, and he's very good. It's crazy. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> what happened? Did you pull it up? I searched it, but then I accidentally pulled it up. <laughs> it's okay. You can watch it right now. I don't care. Hey, guess what? I think we both can watch it right now. I've never been uh, someone paying attention the whole time away from this being what I wanted it to be. Oh, look at this. Well, they're not going to be able to see it on here. But we are. But we are. What? Sorry, everyone. Go- look at him landing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Look at that. 
That fucking rule. Oh man, that was cool. <laughs> and a fun thing that happened was uh I, I had I went to the BRB screen so everyone didn't get to see what was happening. <laughs> uh, that's cool. <laughs> let me find out. Let me find out how to get you back in here. Um where did that go? You need me back in there? Somehow some reason Zoom works in this weird way that uh, whenever the Zoom window changes size, it, my stream goes crazy, like on Twitch or whatever. Oh, so I shouldn't have done that. When you screen shared it, it showed them like the middle of it. <laughs> and then I just went to a Be Right Back screen. We're back. Look at this. Fearless Flyers out here gifting a bunch of subscriptions to people. That is so nice. Now they can send out a picture of me as a child. Okay. I got a little emoji that's me in a life jacket. You want to talk about swimming? <laughs> I grew up on a lake. So we got a little life jacket, Kyle. Oh, we know. I heard all about your late life uh, <laughs> on uh, your episode of High and Mighty. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, last. God, that was so fun. All right. Let's see. We've got two more questions. Two more questions. What do you do want it. to happen to your body after you die? Oh, uh, I want to be uh, cremated and uh, have my uh, ashes put in several different oceans. Great. Um, the, the problem for your family is it's only Arctic and Indian. Uh, right. <laughs> and then last question what conspiracy theory would you go to bat for the hardest uh that melania is kgb really <laughs> <laughs> she's john malkovich from rounders yeah she doesn't want you splashing the fucking butt <laughs> you should see her crunch those oreos when she says her husband isn't an internet bully <laughs> I do think uh, I I just have a feeling she's someone who was her job was to infiltrate uh, like the New York socialite scene and ended up accidentally <laughs> fucking stumbling ass backwards into the presidency. Like sort of the way he, wants... he stumbled in, she right. stumbled in in a lower extent, and now they're both just like <sighs> she's like she's like Putin, get me out of here, and he's like, are you fucking kidding me? No, you're the first lady of the United States. <laughs> this is the perfect place to have a fucking spy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah you're probably right yeah you're right although a ton of people have uh debunked me <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean if you start looking into the information or the facts or whatever it's gonna kill any idea that you have <laughs> right right <laughs> all right uh well hey gabers thanks for coming on and hanging out with us oh Appreciate please it. dude thanks for having me man. anytime you want to do it let me know Oh, um, right. Yeah, I'm probably again in like six to eight weeks if great. we're still doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go through the rotation. You know what? I'll just BCC everyone I have on one email <laughs> and just give everyone a date without even asking when it is. <laughs> like, just reply all, reply with a date. And then you're like, wow, I uh, I emailed 4,000 people. And the, six, uh, people six people wrote back. The management, my the old management place I was at accidentally uh sent out their holiday thing to a cc instead of a bcc and so every single client they had got everyone else's email address oh. and then people started replying to it and then you're just like because i mean there's people who probably don't want their email address public in there um but when people were when i worked at apple about once a month someone at corporate apple would accidentally email the whole company instead of just <laughs> who they meant to email <laughs> and then everyone would start start replying all all Hey, I think I'm on the wrong email list. <laughs> and then everyone And does then everyone that. will be like, I am also. And then someone will be like, we are all. Please stop replying. And then one person would do a joke. And then someone <laughs> would say, stop doing a joke. And it would. you get 150 emails in a half hour. That happened to me once when I worked at MTV. Uh, someone accidentally sent it globally to every single Viacom employee, not on BC. Yeah. BCC. So everyone was replying all to the anyone who had an MTV or anyone who had a Viacom email address. And uh, eventually, Kurt Loder uh, replied all and was like, hey, guys, knock it off. And then someone <laughs> replied all and was like, you guys heard Kurt, knock it off. And that sent a whole chain of like, we should listen to Kurt. And just like thousands of people responding. And it oh, made me no. So Kurt it. knocked it on. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, Kurt. It's knocked. <laughs> it's okay. What did someone, how old is Kurt? I just saw that yesterday on Twitter. He was He's trying 75. To... That's crazy. I'm glad I haven't been aging at the same pace. Otherwise, I'd be like in my 30s instead of 16 still. 
Uh, well, thanks for being here. I hope you have a oh, good dude. rest of your day. I hope the other thing you have to do today goes well. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's in five hours and I'm dreading it. So, <laughs> um, I appreciate. I did. We didn't. You know, we don't have to talk. I just sent you that pre-planned podcast thing I want to do someday. Someday. Oh, okay. Yeah. It sounds yeah, like the last thing the world needs now is the last thing I need is another podcast. Oh, but let's sure. talk. <laughs> I think if people listen to a ten-minute podcast is kind of my answer. Yes, I think you might be right. We could do it so everyone listens to the whole thing in one afternoon. <laughs> yeah, that's all I want to do. I feel like now's a good time to make a thing that starts and finishes. Oh, smart. Uh, anyways, thanks for being here. Everyone, please. Thanks for having me, dude. Say goodbye to Gabrus. And... I'm leaving the meeting and the Zencaster, so uh, vaya con Dios, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you later. Everyone say bye. Later. <laughs> we'll be right uh, back. Bye. Everybody, I'm gonna grab some water. Get a, our next guest, Churn, and I'll be right back. What's the use of therapy? You don't want to change, babe. I talk too much when I got nothing to say. Maybe it's the game. everybody uh our next guest he's very funny you please enjoy before we get into him a quick clip from alex edelman here is alex everybody well here's alex uh i'm gonna talk about uh, two of my heroes i'm gonna get out of here has anyone heard of coco the gorilla <laughs> yeah well bunch of you guys coco the gorilla for those of you that don't know is a gorilla that speaks fluent sign language and in 1999 this is true coco met robin williams and last year they told Coco that Robin Williams had passed away, and Coco went, Coco friend, Coco sad. Yeah, which is sad. But on the plus side, how funny was Robin Williams that even gorillas were like, this guy <laughs> is unbelievable. <laughs> My comedy barely works if you're not a Jew from New York City. Robin Williams crossed the species barrier. That's the best comedian. <laughs> Second of all, and obviously, did they have to tell <laughs> the gorilla that Robin Williams had passed away? She wasn't gonna catch it on CNN or anything like that. Someone walked into a gorilla enclosure. In like early 2018, they're like, Hi, Coco. Can you put down the banana? We, we have bad news. And they tell Coco, and Coco's like, Oh no.
but Prince is fine, right? <laughs> Get the gun. Coco, calm down. And Coco's like, why was the last David Bowie album so sad? And they're like, Coco! <laughs> and Coco's like, what else do you know? And they're like, no. And Coco's like... And they're like, no. And Coco's like, who's the president now? And they're like... <laughs> Should we tell her he's a relative? Coco, calm down. <laughs> My other hero growing up was Neil Armstrong, and not just because he won all those bicycle races, but because he was the first guy to walk on the moon. That was America's best moment. I love it. It was America's, 50 years ago, 50 years ago this year, that was America's best moment. We get Russia to the moon in the middle of a Cold War. And Russian spaceships are really expensive, really well designed. Because the way you build a Russian spaceship is different. The way you build a Russian spaceship is one large container, and then you take the top off, and there's a smaller container inside of it. And then you take the top of that, and there's a smaller container inside of it. And then you take the top of that, and there's a smaller container inside. I will do this until everybody is laughing. And then you take the top of that, and in the middle, babushka. And America sent three men into space. They sent Buzz Aldrin, they sent Neil Armstrong, and no one ever knows the third guy. No one ever, his name's Michael Collins. No one ever knows the third guy. And that's horrible, because Neil Armstrong might be like one of the most famous men of the 20th century. Michael Collins, third guy on that mission, he isn't even the most famous, Michael Collins. <laughs> There's a movie called Michael Collins starring Liam Neeson. It's about a different guy. <laughs> and America sent these three guys into space taking four days to get there. I know times when they got there, but I know it was nighttime. Because <laughs> the moon was out. And then exactly 35 years later, I met Neil Armstrong in an elevator in New York. I walked in. This is totally true. And he was right there. And I was like, Mr. Armstrong? He's like, yeah. I said, can I have your autograph? And he said, I don't do that. <laughs> and I said, Mr. Armstrong, can, can I have a picture with you? And he said, I don't do that. And I said, Mr. Armstrong, can I shake your hand? And I'll never forget this. He just looked at me and he went, kid, go away. <laughs> You've only known me for a couple of minutes, but if you need to know one thing about me, it's this. If I'm not having a good time, <laughs> No one's having a good time. <laughs> and because I was 15 and I only knew from sarcasm, I looked at Neil Armstrong and I said, this is the worst make-a-wish I could have possibly asked for. <laughs> and then, thinking this would genuinely sting, I went, my favorite should have been Michael Collins. <laughs> And Neil Armstrong took a step away from me, and it was a small step for Neil Armstrong. <laughs> you guys have been really wonderful. Thank you so much. Really hilarious yeah. set. Fantastic. 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 Edelman. Look at that. It's good. It's good. How you doing? How you holding up? You said you're in Boston. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, uh, it is so uh, weird to. I, I caught the end of that set. Oh, really? And yeah, it's so weird to watch. I've now logged off the Twitch, so you'll have to tell me the comments. But but it is so weird to watch yourself do stand up in a time when you haven't done stand up. <laughs> yeah, I edited and just threw up an old, not an old, but a joke from the Conan set a couple months ago. And I was like, was this, is this 20 years old? Remember, that was in January. I called you yeah. when that set came out. Um, well, people, yeah, now we got a little freezing. It was so good in the waiting room. You were like, but I might cut out. And I think we did cut out here. Buddy, I'm sorry I cut out, but you're, I called you when that set came out. Yeah. 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 I think we talked while I was still hanging out there. Yeah. Yeah. I was calling a wish you luck because it was such a, it's such a fun thing to do, Conan. It really is. I, I, and I think I, you know, I hope it happens again. Although, did you watch John Doerr did Conan from his driver's seat with his daughter? It was very funny. Yes, I was thinking of submitting a tape of something in this similar vein to JP. 
I really, really, really. It, John Doerr is one of the comedians I wish everybody knew about. If, when people are like, "Well, who do who are who do you?" You know, what I mean, he's always someone who comes up for me. Where I'm like, this guy's kind of always doing something very funny, and I think he's huge. He's so huge in Canada because he hosts all those TV shows there. But he's such a genius. Hey, I'm curious. Have you written any jokes this week? Have I? Yeah. Um, I let me check my notes. I'm not sure if I have written or if, if I've rewritten um something nope that's the almond brothers i almost just did the almond brothers joke which is literally an old thing from a tape i put up today uh it doesn't look like it uh i wrote sometimes after i browse netflix menu for a few hours i'll open up hulu as a little treat that's just kind of where there's better wi-fi um but that's about it it's tough i've had a hard time writing like real i don't want to just I've been doing some, you know, you do these stand-up Zoom shows. I don't want to just be doing stuff about coronavirus in a stand-up Zoom show. Totally. It's and, a nightmare. And so instead I try and write other stuff or go back through old jokes. And it's, uh, you feel, you, you then feel weird being like cat toys are odd or something when all of this is happening. Ooh, I like I this t- banister. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm look. I'm trying really hard to uh, make my life more interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want a bigger. Want to want to see my room? Yeah, let's do it. I would love a tour. I. <laughs> I'll give you a quick tour of my room. You, let me get you some tour music here too. You won't be able to hear it, but trust me, it's happening and it's nice. I might try to switch to my phone. So it'd be more portable in a second. But anyhow, I'm a big. Bu- oh no! Oh no! And so, uh, can you hear me? We got you a little got bit. You. We got you a little bit, but you're cutting in and out. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna log on to Zoom via my phone. You want to do so it on your phone? Up. All right, we'll go break real quick. We'll be right back. Okay. We're getting them on a the phone. We'll be right back, everybody. Be the skin of your favorite tattoo.
at spring training? I I had my first beer handed to me by George Brett. This is a true story. That's great. Where? Where? I, how old? I was whatever year Calerkin Jr. and uh, Tony Gwynn were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Okay. So that would be 2007. I, I was yes. Yeah, so I was I was oh seven. It was that late. It could have been 2006 or 2007. 2006, I think. It was 2006. I was 17 or 16, something. It was either 06 or 07. Yeah, it was 06. And I had spent that summer working for the Red Sox. And my boss had worked for the Padres before that and the Orioles before that. And um, my heroes were, you know, I loved the Red Sox, obviously, because I was working for them. But Calerkin Jr. and Tony Gwynn were two people I heard about. Uh, I heard about constantly. Yeah. I went to the Hall of Fame induction ceremony that year. And there was this one dinner, and I'll never forget this. You know, have you been to the Hall of Fame? The baseball no, I Hall haven't. of Fame? So they so there are these little copses, right? They're these little sort of for each year they have, you know, like five or six like plaques, right? And they go in a little uh like a little tiny room within a room. Like, right? So there'll be so the room is is like one long hallway but there are little separated areas okay and for the hall of fame dinner they had tables in each little cops and people from that cops were actual hall of famers were sat there in front of their plaques and it was like the most insane thing yeah and i I ended up sat at this table with George Brett and he in a room of ex athletes is the drunkest person. And Dude, it's not close. It's crazy like, how much he drinks. His face is bright, shining red. And he's got like a bazillion beers in front of him. Like just, they're just there. And at some point he just hands me a beer. I'm sat there and he just hands me a beer. And I look at my boss, Charles, and he just goes, okay, huh? <laughs> I think George Brett has this reputation where, which I think would maybe be the most, all other baseball players love him and think he's underrated, if that makes sense. And that has to be the best feeling as a baseball player to be like he's the baseball player that all the other ones are like, that's the guy. Oh, people love him. And he's, and he's a very lovable guy. Like anytime, like he was talking and people were sitting there and like ribbing him mm -hmm. and he's, uh, and he is making, he's like a drunk, fun uncle. He's like a drunkle. And he has a really bad totally... pizza restaurant in Kansas city. I don't even know if it's still open. Well, it's not today. Well, it's Missouri. So it might be reopened already. They're really going but for it there. Is he considered a star though? People must love him. Still. I mean, in Kansas city, this is going to sound wild. In Kansas City, he was God until last year. Even when the Royals won again, they didn't what have a superstar like him. Do you know what I mean? They were like a balanced team with a bunch of guys that everyone liked in Kansas City, but not like a Hall of Fame guy like George Brett. But now this Mahomes thing is different than anything I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, but, you know, like, Mahomes is still a young dude who's like a dynamic star, but he's not, you know, you can't he's not Brett. No, he's not. But it's, it is different. It is different. He feels like he's, it. they treat him like he's played there 30 years. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I've never seen anything like it because the Chiefs blew every playoff game of my whole life until three years ago. Um, but it's, it's absolutely it is absolutely wild how, how much the city is into him and, 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 I mean, he, it's crazy, but also it's the dopest yeah. thing ever because he's so good. <laughs> you know who my biggest hero is? You can hear me, by the way, right? Yeah, yeah, you're back. My biggest hero growing up ever was this guy. <laughs> you hold up a mirror. I can't see the picture enough. Oh, shit. Hockey. I saw hockey. Hmm. I'm going to assume it's not Bobby. Gretzky. Bobby Orr? Yeah, the okay. greatest, the greatest ice hockey player in the history of Boston. Yeah. And like, such a big hero of mine growing up that this room features not one, not two, but three autobiographies of Bobby Orr because 
on my birthday, the year it came out, I got like four different biographies of him from people who knew that I loved him. So everyone <laughs> bought me a biography. You know, they, but yeah, that is greatest. Not a lot of people you know, know this, but Bobby Orr is actually short for Robert Orbit. Robert what? Uh, Orbit. <laughs> I heard it's short for Robert Norbit. <laughs> Robert, that's the, the inspiration for Norbit came from that. It, yeah, they did a black version of his life story starring Eddie Murphy. Um, so we, oh, I just disappeared. I'm back. Oh, sorry. I, I, Did you see my, they yeah. can't see this on the stream, but look what my Zoom away photo is. It's me in front of my Zoom. So it looks like I'm hanging out at these shows when I do a Zoom show. I, I hang the same pictures up and I put the same shirt on and it looks like a cardboard cut out of me is hanging out there. <laughs> it is the oddest. How, how are you liking Zoom shows? Uh, I talk, You know, I said this to Gabrus a little bit where it's like, you know how hard it is for me to focus for an entire set in front of real people? because I like to follow where the energy is going. I have never in my life uh, gotten more jokes out in a set than during these Zoom shows. And then I will ask you, I did a 40 minute Zoom set, like headlining someone's show, and I let the audience hold up fingers out of 10 after every joke. And just use it oh as like, the, basically I've been using it as like the best open mic I could find. You have a tape of it? I would love to see that. Um, No, because it got hacked. <laughs> I wasn't, it wasn't my show, so I couldn't record it. But the guy recording it said, a few minutes in, it got hacked by, uh, people came in and started yelling the N-word and throwing up all the, the clan's Wikipedia page and stuff, like children, hacking it. And so when the host restarted it, he forgot to restart the recording. I would love to um, do that show. Not that. I'll, s I'll send you his name and, and see if he's still doing it and looking for people. It's really fun. Um, but, yeah. Let me ask you a quick let me ask you a quick question about your sports heroes. Mm -hmm. Do you still like the folks that you liked when you were a kid? Um, uh, you know, uh, Larry Johnson didn't hold up long term because he is kind of a, a crazy, like, I don't want to use the word crazy because that's a kind of a mean word to paint with it, but he's, he's like a big QAnon guy now. <laughs> so I hated him because he became like kind of hateful on the internet and then i thought he was rebuilding himself because then he, he was very apologetic for how he used to behave and then he's like a lizard person QAnon guy and i'm like oh that's not rebuild you know what i mean it's like when someone becomes a scientologist and you're like why are you so well behaved now and i go oh, no it's I was, worse i was asking that because i'm looking around this room like dedicated to people that i haven't thought about in literally like 15 years but i think i can beat you in terms of problematic faves um i uh, let me, I, have I shown you my Aaron Hernandez tattoo? I mean, to be fair, I just got it. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be hard to beat my dad who, who has always talked about how good OJ Simpson was, which is wild because we were talking about that in the mid nineties. Um, no, it, the, you know, I, I never, I never really that? loved Javon Belcher. He wasn't good. You know what I mean? And he did kill his family and himself. I never really loved him. Um, I mean, I love Chris Benoit, but just for the personal life, you know? <laughs> I always like Chris Benoit because I, too, am a Bowflex man. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that joke is so good and so niche. Um, it's for so everyone who it's for is here. Oh, my God. But it's oh like, my God. it is, you know, liking any wrestler, I get. I'm trying to think of Chiefs or that Royals players. I'm sorry. That joke is so funny and so <laughs> for me. Oh, it's uh, just, who, just that's so great. Who really that's didn't hold up from my childhood? I, I have a hard time figuring it out. Who 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 do you have? Who you're like? Well, I can't believe. It. Oh, I mean, First, it's like I got rid of a lot of Cosby books and records. <laughs> buddy, hold on a second. Look at this. I found this the other day. I was cleaning out my room. Oh, he, oh, <laughs> this is headshot. Oh no, it froze. Another, oh no, it froze. It's sign. It's did it freeze? Will you throw it back up there for one second? <laughs> I just want a screenshot of it. <laughs> yeah, my dad likes to pick up comedy records because uh, I have a bunch of them I've collected, and and he finds them pretty cheap in Missouri, and it'll always be like. 
It, we we purged. We just purged the Cosby ones last time I was in Missouri. And there's like Woody Allen oh. stuff and. Oh, but I'm, like Cosby was my hero. You know, like I I loved the guy. Yeah. I think just once he the, dies, we can talk about how he was good at structuring stories again. I think he might be done for good. Yeah. But yeah. my problematic fave, um, every night when I was a kid, I slept underneath a painting of uh, conspiracy theorists <laughs> and right-wing <laughs> actors. Chilling. No. See, those are the weird... Like, Cosby is a giant fucking criminal, the worst scum dude in the whole world. You know what I mean? He's a ba- as bad as a person can be. But it's just like, Kurt Schilling, you're like... You want to like find him and be like, buddy, stop. <laughs> like, please, go tank a video game company again and leave us all alone. Well, you know, the funny thing is that that video game company cost the state of Rhode Island like $70 million. It was like a huge fucking fiasco. <laughs> Let me see if but I there's can... some. I think there's I'm, some cool... oh, I'm still blocked by him on Twitter. That's all I was trying to pull up. It's chilling? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what for, but I'll throw it up here so everyone can see it in the stream. Um, I, I think I'm blocked because I'm blocked by Kurt Schilling and Bill Simmons, who I don't equate to be the same thing. Um, I'm blocked by Kurt Schilling because I I, I asked him one time, I was like, he, he was tweeting some insane stuff, and I was like, can't you just uh, run a video game company into the ground and leave us all alone? And Bill Simmons, I got blocked because I asked him if he could write and go an entire article without mentioning The Wire. I would subscribe to his premium podcast. <laughs> that is so funny. And <laughs> hey, if you're watching this right now, I only want you to follow me on social media if you liked Kyle's Chris Benoit joke because that is my real. <laughs> I got a little thing going. I figured out how to make a robot that tells everyone your social media handles when I type Alex into the chat. Oh, sick. By the way, you know what else I found while cleaning up this room? This is a bottle of champagne from the last year I worked at the Red Sox officially. This is from our clubhouse celebration after we won the World Series. That's so dope. Like I stole, like I stole it from the clubhouse. That's a good souvenir to have. Well, I confessed it to my then boss a couple yeah. of days ago. I was like, "Hey, I found it," and he's like, "We thought people would steal it," and I'm like really and he's like yeah and then he's like check the back of it and i'm like it's authenticated because they knew people were gonna steal oh that's great from from the clubhouse he's like if you ever really hard up you can sell your world series champagne i still have a full bottle of beer from when sporting kansas city won the mls cup in like 2012 i can't remember the exact year 11 but uh they had like the commemorative bottles and i still have it hanging out here but that's see that's the I think I like the unique, weird souvenir thing. The thing that wasn't sold as a souvenir, if that makes sense. A hundred percent. We have, when they renovated Arrowhead Stadium, they put in uh, the grass turf, you know what I mean? Like, because the other stuff was destroying everyone's knees. Um, yes. And I'm, who knows if that's why Junior Seau did what he did, but it could have been that AstroTurf thing in San Diego. I'd Probably not. Um, probably the hitting, running our heads into each other for 30 years. Um, yeah. but they, my dad was working on like, a on Arrowhead stadium on a building to the side of it. They have like those fan, like we're play, you know, like a little pavilion and they threw away all of the AstroTurf and my dad just took as much of it as he could. And so our whole dock at, 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 at my parents' house, they live on a lake. The whole dock is covered in AstroTurf. You can still see the outline of like the arrow and a number, like a zero on it. Wow. It's crazy. And, and so I, that stuff made it kind of everywhere and. Um, I was like, that's that's the weird souvenir stuff that I like, where even if it's not worth, it's not something that you like. they would sell on QVC, like a commemorative coin or something. Oh, dude, I have some... All my stuff is so weird. Like, a lot of these things are like rally towels or bobbleheads. A lot know? of rally towels, a lot... We used to stay after games and go pick up the commemorative cup from those games that people would just leave. Um, Ideal. And like, then we would so leave weird. with like a hundred of them. That's that's so spectacular. I have I loved a game used bat. That was my oh. big thing. Yeah, I mean that's I the craziest bat, thing. I have some I have some of these that are Einar Diaz. Do you remember Einar Diaz? <laughs> I don't know, like just some random catcher from the Rangers, Trot Nixon, who I did love. 
Big Poppy, Ellis Burks, Johnny Damon. This bat is actually this bat is actually historically significant. This is the bat that Johnny Damon hit his hundredth home run as a Oh, Red there Sox. you go. We want to talk about Royals. There's 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 a Johnny Damon. I got a. I remember one time after a game, I wanted to get Johnny Damon's autograph. I waited out by where the Royals players leave, which is just they were so bad back then. They just left from a Greyhound bus stop and. Uh, Jermaine Die. I couldn't get Johnny Damon stuff. Jermaine Die was autographing something for me, and then he drove away with the sharpie. <laughs> and my dad was like, "Jermaine Die just stole my friggin' sharpie and drove off." Jermaine Die just stole my sharpie. That's the worst title for an. I mean, this is. I'm not. I might have talked about this is a Yankees thing, but I wanted to get Derek Jeter's autograph real bad one time, and I waited after a Royals Yankees game. I think we even went out there early to try and get mm-hmm. a good thing. And we waited after a Royals Yankees game. What is this noise? I have Sorry, to know. It's the, my phone, my my the phone, the landline is ringing. <laughs> so we wait, and I want to get Derek Jeter's autograph. We wait. the 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 game is over. You wait. You know, an hour after the game, finally the Yankees players come out. Derek Jeter just like runs and gets on the bus. I'm standing there with a the ball and like a Sports Illustrated for kids, cause and like a sharpie and um. He just runs on the bus, and I'm so pissed. I'm like crying because Derek Jeter doesn't care about Kansas City. He just, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I want his autograph. So this is Derek it's Jeter fun. in like 1996, and so some guy yeah, comes over and starts talking to my dad, and he's talking, and my dad's talking to him, and my dad's like thanking this guy, and he signs the baseball. And I'm so mad that this guy ruined my baseball. Just some, I'm just like, and I take the bait, and my dad's like, here, and he gives me. I'm so mad. I'm like, I don't want this baseball. I don't know who Mario Rivers is. You can keep the baseball. And my dad's like, okay, I'll keep the baseball. And I'm so mad because it's his baseball now. And my dad just got Mariano Rivera just came up and chatted with my dad for a little bit, signed the ball. And I didn't care at all because it wasn't Derek Jeter. <laughs> totally. That is what life was like as a kid. Yeah. I have, I, let me see if I have a, a Derek Jeter autograph somewhere. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I collected this shit for, you know, for years. It was my life, all of this stuff. Oh, look at this. <sighs> By the way, these are old illustrated and old stuff. But, is that Carmelo I mean, Anthony? Look at this. In a Nuggets uniform? This is fun. I can't. I wish I didn't recognize it from that. Larry Holmes beats Tim Witherspoon. <laughs> yeah, there's Derek Jeter. Look at that. Disgraced Your owner of Miami Derek. Marlins, Derek Jeter. Bowflex owner, Derek Jeter. Bowflex owner. Oh, did you see the Chris Benoit thirty for thirty? You don't know Bowflex. <laughs> oh, wait! Hey, you know, you've been the, watching the, what you know? the what? The Jordan doc? Yes. Yeah, it's been very fun. Um, it's so good. I really it's like so- that. The only can you imagine how much Jordan? How, think about how whoever had to play Jordan the night that he lost quarters to that security guard probably got fucking took so hard because Jordan was so <laughs> mad, and the security guard does the shrug. That is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, that's the bravest thing I've ever seen anyone do, risking their job to put up on Michael Jordan. To shrug, to do the Jordan shrug to Jordan's face. Oh, man. I I like to think, I want that guy to be like, Jordan owes me $88.25 at a time from a running tab we have going for throw quarters at the wall because this guy's a sociopath, the game. That's one of those um, Jordan gambling debts he never paid. Right. That's you, that's why what happened to his dad happened was that 25 cents he didn't pay to that security guard. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's some of these old SIs. You want to? Uh, let's do it. I mean, we got I got we got to, uh, one quick thing we got to do just before we wrap, which is sure. You have to guess a letter on our running hangman game. Uh, A. A? A might be the best letter you could guess. Yeah, it's missing a lot of A's. All right, chat. Here you go. Let's see if you can get it today. All right. 
He'll be hanging up there, just too far away to actually read and enjoy. Um, but let's <laughs> show us what show us give us a little tour and let's kind of like fade out like a nice pleasant like goodbye type of thing I got some pleasant music playing Um, okay. Also, can I plug my plug away? Patreon? Oh plug I'll away plug my, I forgot a patreon where I've been putting up like at, like, you know a bunch of stand-up and stuff that I've been finding and uh, I've been making a bunch of like uh, lists of like good weird shit that i love like short stories and stuff yeah it's, it's a good patreon so sort of like a like an alex stuff. brain dump consumption entertainment patreon it, it, I, I make things called commonplace books which are like scrapbooks okay and i make these commonplace books and just put them uh and put them out like i've done three so far one on like art about one about fiction related to chocolate one about scam charities and one about um uh high concept short stories okay so just like looks to a bunch of shit but yeah i'm it's a brain dump what so, is the name uh it's just patreon slash alex edelman patreon.com slash alex edelman cool. got it in the chat and, there so people oh, have the link please oh shit someone just guessed it they guessed the uh uh you want to know the answer I, it, it is i i see it before Go ahead. I I Cap and Crunch. <laughs> that is I think it says I think favorite. I found the right people in these viewers that says says the fact that they know I wrote it and they got that from that. These viewers are awesome. The only comment I saw them leave was his name is too bland, which I can't do anything about. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But, but, uh... Um all right, show us one thing. Give us something to go out on here. Okay. Here are illustrated. One thing to remember you by. I I Cap and Crunch. Ooh, okay. Boston. Larry Bird burns Atlanta in the playoffs. Oh. <laughs> Why is he the only basketball player who knew how to jump? Yeah. Back then, that was the thing. Back then, it was crazy. Just, you know, and even he couldn't jump that much. Heeb? Magazine. It oh, was, they were saying Michael Collins' name was was boring. Just so you know. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's true. His name was pretty bland. Yeah. The day of the dolphin. This is from nineteen eighty three. This Gary one, Cooper. This one's just I love baseball. Well, what is a big hand for baseball? Y'all remember baseball? <laughs> Tom Seaver. Man, football players have forgotten. Dave Winfield. They really had their games. aesthetic down here on Sports Illustrated. Yeah, it was just one guy. Another and, issue of he. Oh, no. no, same issue. Oh, okay. Heed. Remember, a uh, Pat Tillman, an athlete, dies a soldier. Oh wow, what's he been up to? <laughs> Besides being know, used but... unfairly as a martyr by people who don't understand him. Oh, a hundred percent. Remember, remember, everyone was talking about Pat Tillman for the longest time. And then they were like, "It was a friendly fire scandal," and everyone was like, "We're not going to talk about Pat." Yeah, Tillman and people were like, "Why would? How can Kaepernick knee because Pat Tillman died getting shot by another American?" You're like, "What? Where are we at? <laughs> how do we end up here?" Wait, this is a "Where are they now?" issue of SI for cheerleaders. And the the 1972 yeah, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. They want to know oh, where Lord. they are now. Let's hit up Sports Illustrated and see if they'll do another follow up. <laughs> right now where are they now from the 1972 dallas cowboys cheerleaders from the where are they now issue of sports illustrated from 1999 it's from 2001 you're pretty close Ooh, and august or october where... 2001 this is important july 4th, okay 2001. wow we should have had follow we should have followed up three months later <laughs> oh my uh, do i have what what is do i have a 9 11 issue of this I was at the Chiefs Giants game a week and a half after the first NFL game after 9 11. It was in Kansas City. They were playing Giants, and someone brought a huge American flag, and I got on Sports Center. Truly worked out pretty great for me. Okay, that there we go. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't even see. It. Let's hit up Sports Illustrated and see if they'll do a Where Are They Now issue. <laughs> oh, God. 50th anniversary. <laughs> Man, I don't think that there's a 9-11. Uh, I don't think I kept any 9-11 issues. 
Uh, there's a Saddam Hussein death of a dictator, but I think I must have been. Ah, uh, yes, more, uh, Sports Illustrated. <laughs> the cover that no one would pose for. Mm. I mean, these are really, these are really, really weird. <laughs> All right, Happy man. 40th birthday, Michael. All right, look, I got it. I'll let you go. You got to go. Thanks for coming on. I like this. Oh, you're gone. Oh, you're back. We we're just switching cameras. I'm back. Uh, everybody, please cameras. please thank Alex for coming on. Say hi. Thanks. Look, at he got the letter Thanks that got you guys the word, too. It was so fun. Oh, all right, I'll talk to you later, Kev. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, everybody, look at that. That was a good show. Alex here. I don't know why Zoom was what Zoom's doing. Thank you guys. Good crib store. That was nice. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, yeah, check out. We got Boast Rattle coming up on Saturday. Look down below. Look down below. Boast Rattle down, uh, going on Saturday night. Competitive compliment contest. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, feel good. Please subscribe to the show. Please like the show. I feel good. Everyone have a good Wednesday. I hope so. It was fun. It was fun. Right? <laughs> uh, but remember, subscribe to the show, like the show, all that sort of thing. Next thing we got going on Saturday night, Bow Straddle, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific. Saturday night, Bow Straddle. Com comedians competitively complimenting one another follow the show wherever for me i guess um listen to never seen it we got a new episode coming out tomorrow yeah you'll be at karaoke like digital that's kind of fun still don't have a discord i don't even know what discord is no idea how it works i gotta look into it that's the next thing i'll look into that in our off days here and we'll try and figure it out but thanks everybody um i just have no idea what discord is or how it works I can't believe. Uh, be safe if you're going to a karaoke thing. I don't know. All right, everybody. I don't have a video game podcast. I have a podcast called Never Seen It, more of a movie podcast. Do you might? I wish I had a video game podcast. Oh no! What if this you discover I'm not the person you thought I was? This is crazy. I've never seen it. You thought I was someone else. What's happening? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, you know, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is what, what, this is crazy. This is incredible. Wow, we, I almost had signed off. Is, is there a video game podcast? What is happening? Who knows? Let's leave on the mystery. Let's leave on the mystery. No, we're ending right now on the complete mystery. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching the show. Who knows what's going on? Jones, you can't leave. You can't leave. Can't leave. You can't leave. Because you got, you got a subscription. 